Hi, I'm Bob German, and this video is Making a Q&A Bot for Microsoft Teams, Part 2. In the last video, I showed you how to create a Q&A Maker Knowledge Base and how to make a bot that calls the Knowledge Base to answer user questions. In this video, I'll show you how to make and deploy a Teams application for that bot and how to edit the bot code in a quick and dirty sort of way. So let's dive in. So where we left off last time was in the Azure portal, looking at the bot settings. And you'll see the Microsoft app ID is there among the, the app settings. Copied that onto the clipboard, popped over to Microsoft Teams, and you can actually chat with the app ID. Just paste the app ID into the two box and Teams reverse looks up the bot and you can type your questions. Okay, so now let's make a Teams app. To do that, we're going to go into App Studio and go to the Manifest Editor and create a new app. So we have to give it a short name and a long name, and it needs a unique identifier, so we'll let uh, App Studio generate that. And then the package name also needs to be unique, and I like to use my DNS name backwards and then add something onto the end of it. And then uh, put a version number and a long and a short description. And let's see. Um, put developer information. This is going to get stitched into the user interface in Teams. Uh, if you're a partner, you want to put your Microsoft Partner Network ID in here, uh, your app URLs are also going to be um, stitched into the UI. And I'm just going to live with these uh, boring icons for right now and come down here to bots. So I'm going to set this up. Now we could let App Studio create a bot registration for us, but we already have one that we got with the Q&A Maker web app bot. I'm going to go to an existing bot and select from one of my existing bots and scroll down a little, and hey, there it is. Uh, now, my bot isn't going to do most of these things, but I can decide if I want this, the personal scope that is one-on-one, -on -one, the team scope, uh, or the group chat, and I'll take all three. All right, so we're pretty much all set. Let's go ahead and test this bot out. And so I'll install it, and if I click Add, it'll install it into my own personal scope. And so now I can start to interact with the bot. Now the other option is I could install this into to a team. So if you pull down this little thing on the side, you could see that I could put it into a team or a group chat. I'll go ahead and put it into a team. And I can pick, uh, now the, the bot is in all channels of the team. Bots don't yet work in private channels. And um, if once you install it into a team, it's gonna be available in all the channels. And if you're in a team, you have to at mention the bot. I mean, that's a kind of a good thing because otherwise anybody typed anything inside of this channel, the bot would go try to find an answer for what they said, and it could be pretty aggravating. So you have to at mention the bot in order to get its attention. And you can see that it works. Okay, so let's go into the Azure portal where I want to show you a few more things about your bot. So we'll go into bot services and come down and find our bot. And um, I'm going to go to all app service settings. So the bot itself is actually a web service. It's running in Azure. And when you call it, a little piece of code runs. And that code calls the Q&A maker knowledge base, gets the answer, and then spits it back over to Teams uh, as in a response or actually in another web service call. So that bot service is here inside of this app service that I'm going into. So here we can see where the bot is hosted. One thing you might want to pay attention to is the scale up setting. Um, by default, your bot is going to be set put into an S1 production setting, which is uh, currently $73 a month here in the US as I'm recording this. Um, you could 
if you're only using this for development, you might want to turn this down to a lower setting. So I've done that here. Um, of course, it will be slow, slower, certainly slower, especially to start up with that setting. And then I wanted to show you this app service editor. So this is not a good practice. You really want to download the code and deploy the bot as code, manage the code in a nice uh, managed release cycle. But if you just want to go in and make a tweak to a bot, um, I won't tell anybody if you do it this way. So you go into this um, app service editor and you can actually edit the code. So what you'll see here is um, if I go down a little bit uh, on line 51, I've got a, a line of code, no Q&A answers were found, right? So what's going on here is that, um, you know, it just couldn't find an answer in the knowledge base. So a common modification is to just come in here and change this text. And what I'm going to do is put a little piece of text that says, um, no, no answer found, please fill in this form. And then I've got a link to a form. Now notice that the link is in markdown mode. I don't, I'm not going to explain markdown mode in this video, but you can look it up. It's a very simple notation. And so uh, the text of the link is in square brackets and the uh, URL of the link is in parentheses with no space in between. And I can make that link to a form that I previously created with Microsoft Forms. Now, the next thing, if you make one of these uh, modifications, um, you have to go to the console and type a one word command build to actually build and recompile the code and now you can go back and let's just um went back too far let's let's go ahead and test this in web chat so i'm going to try to stump the bot are you stymied we'll see if the chit chat had that nope no answer found please fill in this help form. And hey, look, there's a help form. So this might be a nice way to um, sort of learn from your users what questions need to be added to the Q&A maker bot. Thanks for watching this Microsoft 365 Patterns and Practices video. If you like this video, please subscribe to the Patterns and Practices YouTube channel at aka.ms slash spnp videos. I'm Bob German. You can follow me on Twitter at Bob1German, and please check out my blog at Bob1German.com. That's all for this time, and thanks for watching.